A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brethren, I believe nothing can happen that will outweigh the supreme advantage of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For him I have accepted the loss of everything, and I look on everything as so much rubbish, if only I can have Christ and be given a place in him. I am no longer trying for perfection by my own efforts, the perfection that comes from the law, but I want only the perfection that comes through faith in Christ and is from God and based on faith. All I want is to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and to share his sufferings by reproducing the pattern of his death. That is the way I can hope to take my place in the resurrection of the dead. Not that I have become perfect yet. I have not yet won, but I am still running, trying to capture the prize for which Christ Jesus captured me. I can assure you, my brothers, I am far from thinking that I have already won. All I can say is that I forget the past and I strain ahead for what is still to come. I am racing for the finish, for the prize to which God calls us upwards to receive in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt becomes tasteless, what can make it salty again? It is good for nothing and can only be thrown out to be trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hilltop cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp to put it under a tub. They put it on the lampstand where it shines for everyone in the house. In the same way, your light must shine in the sight of men, so that seeing your good works, they may give praise to your Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. So the Lord here is still up on the mountain with his disciples. He's just uh, preached to them the beautiful Beatitudes, the way in which we are called to live uh, with God's own life within us, and that is expressed then through the Beatitudes, so that the divine life, as some of the commentators say, the divine life is what animates us and makes us like God, and the way in which that then becomes manifest in our life is the living out of the Beatitudes. And then from this intimacy of life, this is what the Lord is highlighting here for his disciples, that from this intimacy of life with him, then he is able to work through his mystical body in the continuation of his work of bringing healing and bringing light. And so he is referring to his disciples now as salt and light, but that is only in as much as they are united with him. And so as soon as we lose our relationship or that intimacy with Christ, we no longer become that salt which has any type of effect. We become the salt that the Lord says is good for nothing. For the Christian, as we've said before, to lose Christ is to lose the essence of what a Christian is. In the same way that if, a salt, if salt loses its saltiness. And so for us, that relationship with Christ is what is essential. So what does it mean to lose it? St. Thomas Aquinas says that something loses when it loses its strength, when it loses its essence. God has made us and he has made us to be good. What does that mean? It means to be what he has created us to be. At the moment of creation, when the Lord created and he looked out at what he had created, he saw that it was good, meaning he saw that it was what he had created it to be. But then in the fall, we become less than what we should be in terms of as God has created us. And Christ has come to restore that goodness, to restore that image in us. And in as much as he does that, is in as much as we retain, if in a certain sense, our saltiness. But if we lose that, that intimacy with Christ, then again, we are no longer able to do anything. The Lord says, apart from me, you can do nothing. And so also the salt that has lost its saltiness is good for nothing and can only be thrown out. So how do we lose that relationship and that intimacy with Christ? First, through sin. When we sin, especially mortal sin, grace is cut off from the interior of the soul. And the life of God is no longer in our soul. And it needs to be restored through the sacrament of confession. This season of Lent is when we take a particular look at our sins, at our faults, and we examine our consciences with more intensity so that we can come to God and be restored through the sacrament of confession into that deep intimacy of life with him again. But also, it can be in terms of the other faculties of the soul. It's whenever our mind deviates from truth. Christ is truth. And so inasmuch as our minds separate themselves from truth and we leave the truth in our minds and we go off in terms of our thoughts in all other kinds of ways in which we desire, we in a certain sense leave God behind, leave Christ, leave the Word who is truth. And in that way, we lose our saltiness in terms of our thoughts and our minds. And so not only are we called to care for and nurture that grace that is in us through the sacraments, 
but also to make sure that we give our minds over to the contemplation of truth, which is nothing else than contemplating Christ who is truth. And so again, in this season of Lent, not only are we turning away from our sins, but we are also turning more intentionally towards God and towards Christ. And so we do that by our daily meditation on the scriptures, most especially the gospels, whereby we encounter truth himself and truth is able to fill our mind. But it is also to do with his love and our hearts. We also lose the strength of our hearts when we lose God, who is love. And so the more in ways in which we act without love, without charity, we also step away from God and lose that strength, <coughs> lose that saltiness. And so what we are called to in Lent is not only to care for the grace that is within us and also the truth that should be in our mind, but also the love that should animate our hearts and all of our actions so that we act with truth and with love. This is the same principles that we encounter when we see that we are the light of the world or a lamp, a lamp which burns. The flame of a lamp gives both light and warmth in the same way that the Christian is called to give and proclaim Christ's truth and his love. Christ fills us in this intimacy of life and prayer for a purpose, that, we, that he can use us as he desires to use us. As we've said before, the word in the Greek for this lamp means a portable lamp, a lamp that can be carried by hand. So also the Christian is called to be carried by Christ and placed wherever he desires to use the Christian. So that his light that is in us, because of that intimacy of life with him, can then be used as he desires, because we are now docile to his will. And so in the season of Lent, we are called to guard that grace, as we've said, but also to fill our minds with truth and our hearts with love for the purpose of then being docilely used by God so that he can continue that work of salvation, healing, illumining, all of these things, the proclamation of his truth, the spread of his love through us, and so that the mystical body of Christ continues the work of the head, which is Christ himself. Amen.